Representative LaShawn Ford, thanks for joining us again on the Illinois Channel. And we are here at the veto session. As we stand here, uh, the mayor of Chicago is going to be coming down here, and she has a couple of things on her legislative agenda. We want to talk to you about that. One is Chicago got a casino, but they were told that uh, by an industry expert in the gaming business that the taxes they have are so high, no one could make any money with the tax rates. So she's looking to reduce that. Give us your thoughts on, on that issue, if you will. I mean, she's going straight by the book. The um, commission that she paid for said that no casino would profit enough to uh, want to own in the city of Chicago. So she's got a real fight on her hands, to, and she's got evidence to prove that we need to do something about the tax rate for Chicago. And I think that her strong advocacy down here in Springfield is going to help. You know, part of the context of her coming down here is the city has an $838 million budget hole she's trying to close. And so the, having a casino to bring in more revenue would be part of the way to close that. Now, when she's down here, there's others who are saying if you lower that, then some of that money uh, ought to be going to... Uh, help what poorer poor areas right. I guess and and I think the mayor would I be right in saying the mayor would go wait a minute we need the money to close this budget hole if we give it to you I still got the budget hole yeah and so you're absolutely right Terry what happened the agreement was when she was campaigning was that the money with the transfer tax would be spent for homeless prevention and to help with housing for homeless people and once she got an idea of what the books look like, she said, we need to put this in a general revenue fund and not dedicate it to homelessness. And so the advocates and Chicago legislators decided to stand in the way, and they killed the um, uh, transfer tax. Yeah, and I think I, those were two separate issues, and I may have conflated them by talking about the casino. The casino, we need to get the tax lowered yes. so that someone would want to run a casino right. and still have a profit. There's also the transfer tax, and let's yeah. let's talk about that. So what would the transfer tax do? So the transfer tax would tax uh, only at the sale of properties, and it would tax higher-end properties at a, at a rate and lower the rate on lower-value um, properties. And so that would have that put lots of money in the city's um, um, revenue stream. But... What happened, the mayor said that she understand that she made promises to use it for homelessness, but there's an 800 something million dollar budget deficit and she needed it for the general revenue. And so that's what happened with that. And with the casino, 72% of the um, revenue going to the state and um, reducing the amount that a um, investor would have and make made it almost unlikely that an investor would like to um, build in the city of Chicago because it wouldn't um, give them the yield that they were looking for. Yeah, and, I, and we need that revenue for the, um, for the uh, city of Chicago and the state of Illinois. Have you decided where you stand relative to the mayor and those who, uh, relative to the transfer tax, and saying the money should have been going to help uh, economically depressed neighborhoods? Do you stand with the mayor at this point, or just what are your positions? You know, I think that it's, it's critical that the, um, the mayor has the support. She's not saying she want to dedicate the funds to another special project. She's saying, look, we got $800 million. How are we going to um, worry about one avenue when we got this big um, hole that we have to fill? So I think that when you have a budget, your budget could also include things to help with homelessness. And so I think that the fight should be, look, give us your idea of what you're going to do to reduce and help the people that's homeless if you're going to put this rev new revenue into, a, into the general revenue fund. So I think that um, she's new, and I think that we have to do everything that we can to um, make sure that we support her as she tries to fill this $800 million-plus um, budget deficit. And in her budget address, she even mentioned that if we do nothing, coming up over the next two years, there's going to be millions more that are, uh, the city is going to be facing as far as pension payments to the police and fire. 
While we are working towards balancing this year's revenue with this year's cost, two years from now, in 2021, we will have to figure out how to pay for the increased annual cost of over $200 million for public safety services followed by another increase of $400 million for municipal and labor pensions the year after that. In other words, no matter what we do for this coming budget, Chicago will be on the hook for over a half a billion in new pension obligations in the, over the next three years. That's going up. So, you know, you need to finish the $838 million hole now, but apparently she's She's thinking the, maybe the only way we, the city can do it, well, she's going for the marijuana thing, but that'll take a while. The casino, that'll take a while. She's going to raise taxes on food and beverages. Uh, but still, it seems like she's really swimming against the current as far as the costs keep adding up. Yeah, and now one of the ways that she's talking about fixing the crisis with the Chicago's budget is a huge property tax increase and that is going to not going to go over well with the people in Chicago to have such a big property tax increase. I believe that it's not going to impact someone who has properties $500,000 or below if I remember right but the highest level and that might be like a $10 million of course that sounds high but if someone has a an office building or you know right. a, a, a uh, if it's in the $10 million range, if I remember right, and it is, as you said, progressive, that it gets up to 2.25%, uh, which for those who are bad at math would be a tax of $225,000 on the sale of a $10 million piece of property. And so the, the problem with that, she, she has that, but that's not going to pass. And so now Chicago is going to be um, charged with a residential property tax increase, which is going to be very hurtful to homeowners because the tax that she wanted to prevent a property tax increase was a one-time deal when you buy and sell. Now she's proposing to her city council a property tax increase on homeowners, and that's going to be at the tune of like $65 million, and that's going to be um, painful for uh, resident um, for um, homeowners. Before we let you go, we could always talk longer, yeah. but uh, you have been a champion in the past of a bill that would give, after a divorce, uh, we'll call it the Equal Parenting Bill, uh, and basically that both the mother and father would have more or less 50% as long as there's no argument against them. You know, I mean, if somebody was a drug user or something or a felon, that would disqualify them, but all things being equal, it would become a 50-50 parenting, if I'm representing that properly. Can you give us an update? Is there any movement at all in that approach? Yeah, the goal was to make sure that with the share of parenting 50-50 bill was to make sure that two fit parents had access to their kids to help raise them. And studies show that when a child has two parents in their life, it makes them grow up more healthy and more successful so but the bill right now has so much opposition from the um, bar association and the domestic violence group and i think that they're drowning out the reality that um, two fit parents need to be in the child's life and so we need to figure out how we're going to build some momentum to get the shared parenting bill heard and passed in the uh, state of illinois because it's the right thing to do I mean, if a parent, whether it's a father or a mother, has access to a child on Tuesday and every other weekend, that means that person is probably fit. And that means that that person should be considered to have equal access to that child for the child's best interest. Given the fact that there are like 14 factors in the law that you still have to prove to be fit as a parent. but. You know, the Bar Association and the um, domestic violence people are so um, loud and strong against this. And it's unfortunate because it's causing a lot of families to be destroyed. It's causing a lot of kids not to be in, um, in a relationship with two parents, whether it's uh, the father or the mother. But it's really um, hurting people from all demographics, from all um, neighborhoods and and it's, it's unfortunate it's really it, it, it really 
tears away children from a healthy lifestyle. Before we wrap up, let's just do a little bit of a look ahead. So we're here for the veto session. It ends on Thursday. Then you're going to be off until basically the beginning of February as far as being down here at the Capitol. What would you, looking ahead to the spring session, are there things as yet that you have on your priority list or that if you had the ear of the governor, you would say, hey, I hope you're going to focus on this, that, and the other thing? Well, there's a big constitutional amendment that I would love for the governor to look at, and that is to allow people that's in prison to vote. There's no reason why people that's incarcerated in the state of Illinois shouldn't have the right to vote in um, the state of Illinois. Um, most people that's locked up will one day um, be free. And if we want to help them reintegrate into society, we need to give them things to um, be a part of society. And, and I think that when they have the ability to read about elections and and keep up with what's going on in society and make decisions, I think that, it, that that's a great way to make sure that citizens in this country and in the state um, will be able to have a, a better connection with the outside world. And that's what we need if we want to reduce recidivism. Uh, LaShawn Ford, we could always talk longer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fighting the temptation to do that, but well, thank I, you for joining yeah. us. That's very good. All right. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.